meaning you'll never have to step foot into a doctor's office ever again, as this can easily be done from... Okay, so I pause it now. It's still going. With a whole lot of How was it happening tonight? They want to kill me! Welcome to Undaunted, bringing into the news on top stories. I am Onyi Opala. Let's begin. Africans, 
Amazonians have diverse interest points when they look at the political climate in France during this time in anticipation of the outcome of the elections. Even though Amazonia was never a former colony of France, but has unfortunately been raped in the web of Franc Afrique for decades. It would interest you to know that there are some Amazonians who believe that when the rhetoric in France would change, situations in Africa and perhaps in Amazonia will change as well. It is an open secret that France could possibly be engineering things against Amazonia in high offices because of their economic interests and could be in jeopardy. Now, there is war in Amazonia, and like you already know, Amazonia is the breadbasket of the Cameroons, a very stronghold of France in Africa. The situation may be quite complex, don't you think so? Who is challenging Emmanuel Macron for the presidency? Twelve candidates are running for the French presidency as incumbent Emmanuel Macron stakes his claim for a second term. Report has it that French Cameroon has cooked up a cover-up story to conceal the actual object of the purported traditional rulers of Amazonia extraordinary visit to France. That will be the melting point of our discussion tonight. But before we even think of starting, let's take the prime headlines. <music> Prime headlines. Yaoundé employs desperate measures to stay the Franco Cameroon hegemony. Some say it is death upon arrival. Once again, Dr. Luis Fanal, the former chief of staff of the communications department, rubbishes Chris Anu in obsession. The war draft is the Ambazonian's vote and endorsement of the leadership of the interim government. French election. Who is challenging Emmanuel Macron for the presidency? 12 candidates are running for the French presidency as incumbent Emmanuel Macron stakes his claim for a second term. Tottenham comes from behind to comfortably beat Newcastle. And clearly say now that France and La Republic de Cameroon have taken another wrong option, choosing the wrong persons to talk to, as was the case at National Monologue. It is said that he who runs away from an eminent fight will not avoid a greater fight tomorrow. But we should also let them know that if they go up, go down, go north and south, Sackle is waiting for La Republic de Cameroon and France at that eminent battle at the Swiss led process. Chasing shadows and leaving the substance will not help anyone. I mean, all we need is a free Amazonia, nothing less. Boya is real and we must hold on tight in these trying times. What do you think about that, Stir Smart? Genocidal confused La Republic the Cameroon turns to gullible traditional rulers daydreaming to get a solution to end the Amazonia War of Independence. News is filtering on our desk and on all social media platforms that the moribund regime in Yaoundé and France having exploited all ways and means Cho Ayaba, Sisiku Ayuktabe, and the Kondengi Kabao, Anu Kometa, Munzu Tumi, Eli Smith, Agbal Bala, Abdul Karim, etc. to no avail to silence the never again generation of Amazonia that is bent at nothing less than total independence for the Southern Cameroon's Amazonia. Under the able leadership of the most efficient, most focused, resilient, steadfast, result oriented goal getter Sako, the Yawunde Pari Occultic Blood Latin Junta has resorted to pass through these gullible traditional rulers. Who have been reduced to royal beggars, spoil them with bloody France CFA to keep Amazonians in perpetual slavery in La Republic de Cameroon, which itself is still colonized by France 
more than 60 years of a state-managed drama called Independence on January 1, 1960. According to what is in circulation, LRC in France have shortlisted some 38 of the so-called royal beggars to fly them to France and lavish them with French wines and whiskies and induce them to sign on behalf of Ambazonian documents they have already prepared in their favor to keep southern Cameroons in bondage. Worse than Fuban in 1960. Unfortunately, the Yaoundé Junta, which itself works at variance with all that is obtained on the ground, forgets that the Ambazonian cause is God ordained and no weapon fashioned against it shall prosper. The Yaoundé Moriban regime should know that 1. The traditional rulers no longer represent their subjects. 2. Most traditional rulers have long severe ties with their people. 3. Most traditional rulers now live as IDPs in luxurious hotels out of homeland. 4. Palaces are empty and grass has overgrown therein. 5. Traditional rulers no longer have respect. 6. Traditional leaders lack integrity, having rubbed shoulders with the regime in Yawande. 7. Traditional rulers are now dragged into mud and tossed about by colonial administrators. 8. Traditional rulers have sold their consciences because of ego and partisan politics. Because of its divide and rule strategy, France and La Republic de Cameroon have made traditional authority impotent. Even the purported house of chiefs outcome of the failed Grand National Monologue has failed to go operational for lack of a roadmap and funds. At the end, France and La Republic de Cameroon have taken another wrong option. French Cameroon now cooks up a cover-up plan to thwart public opinion and blindfold Ambazonians. Scandalous, you would say. Reports has it that the cover-up story that purported chiefs are in France for a workshop. Very poor calculation, if you ask me. The notorious rector of the University of Ngondare, Ufi Chinji, happens to be part of the delegation of chiefs to France. The question remains, what is she doing there? Is she a chief? It would appear that not all the individuals within the group we see in the pictures in France wearing mostly the grass field traditional outfits are chief. That aside, La Republique du Cameroon wants us to believe that the mixed multitude of the so-called chiefs that went to France went there for a workshop, <laughs> a workshop to establish museums in Ambazonia. Laughable. If it was some kind of training workshop to establish museum in Ambazonia, why then is it limited to Ambazonia? The Cameroon have traditional rulers with rich heritage across the board. Considering the fact that there are at least 364 traditional rulers in two Cameroons put together can only make us laugh at this. Stay smart. This line of thought is quite unbelievable. What do you think? Indeed, it was diligent. It was intelligent. I hope Anu and Cole will be humble to these sound words. In reaction to what can be described as arrogance in composure, Dr. Lewis wrote in our read, Mr. Anu, you said you thought that I was intelligent and that you are disappointed in me. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to destabilize the revolution that was on autopilot. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you in weaponizing Ambazonians to fight against each other. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to make Sacco the target instead of La Republic de Cameroon. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to make the revolution about an individual instead of the cause we are all fighting for. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to hijack ABC Forum, the TV that we spent months to get it started. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to orchestrate the most stupid and inconsequential impeachment process in history where evidence are presented after a vote. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to make Ambazonia Revolution a mockery to the international community. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to go on TV and say that you brought deals that led Sacco to be impeached. How come you were free while Sacco was impeached when you brought the deals? 
If you think I was intelligent, you should have at least listened to the 10 seconds of messages that I sent to you explaining why your actions were anti-revolutionary and how those actions will weaken the, the revolution. If you think I was intelligent enough, you should have listened to my counseling about what happened to the revolution after Sisiku was impeached where a majority of those supporting him took a back seat and have never returned back. If you think I was intelligent enough, you should have listened to the statistics that I was presenting to you on how and why Amazonians were no longer buying into your divisive tendencies. If you think I was intelligent enough, you should have listened to my advice on how your legacy will be destroyed if you continue with the unfounded allegations about Sacco. I am a man of my own. I deal with facts, logics, and character, and not in... All right, so Sarah's apologies for that mix-up. We'll definitely bring that up to you at the right time. Now, this Saturday, the 9th of April 2022, the Interim House of Representatives, Augustine Ngonjoa's House, will record and have an its first public preliminary session, starting at 11 a.m. Amber time. The Undaunted crew will be there to cover the event. It is worthy to note that the president, his entourage, and some important stakeholders will be present. As you can see, situations are working just as planned. The ground game at the home front is changing as Lavish Storm 3 is already in motion. The Amber World Draft Award 2022 will be started in the weeks ahead. But then, we know some of your questions. What's this World Draft all about? Mr. Smart has some answers. The war draft program, Sacred Values and Political Significance. A seed of legacy. The war draft is the Amazonia's vote and endorsement of the leadership of the interim government. It's an expression of confidence and trust in the people's government to prosecute the war of independence. Amber War Draft commits the wealth and resources of Amazonia for the exclusive contract of political liberation and statehood defense. Humanity cry for help. Amber War Draft is an international platform to appeal broadly and indiscriminately for help, especially on behalf of the defenseless victims of Amazonian origin who continue to pay the highest price with untold misery and shocking atrocities visited upon their innocent souls by French back Yaoundé expansionist regime of French Cameroon. A self defense pledge. The Amber War Draft is humanity's unavoidable duty to afford basic defense and minimum safety guarantees to Amazonian victims willing to protect their rights, political identity, and statehood. In Amber War Draft, the victim is provided the rare opportunity to leverage forces of annihilation and subjugation. Citizens' Contract The Amber War Draft is a covenant by citizens and household of the Amazonian family to undertake the liability of their political liberation from France and her proxy expansionist regime of French Cameroons. A Common Insurance Policy the Amber War Draft is a joint insurance policy against to override the debt of the statehood project and in return, Amazonian stakeholders receive guarantees and assurance of their liberation and sovereignty. The Unity Card. The Amber War Draft is a sacred bond of unity forged out of the common suffering common cultural heritage and common destiny by the peace-loving people of Amazonia. The Freedom Convention, the Amber War Draft is a convention to set the cause for freedom and political liberty above all earthly considerations as a people. Civil Society Dialogue Platform, the Amber War Draft is a socio-political emancipation platform which supports the arguments and rights for self-defense with exclusive engagements on all issues of collective destiny. Community mobilization. The Amber War Draft is a war cry and invitation that mobilizes resources across geopolitics, political affiliations, ethnicities, social groupings, and corporate entities. Union Charter. The Amber War Draft provides intelligence data which informs ongoing debates on the federal character structure. It forms a crucial and intricate part of the most elaborate pattern of cohesion amongst components of statehood. That was as much as we could recollect for you today. We hope for more in our subsequent newscast. I am Star Smart reporting for Undaunted. A
It is always the culture of undaunted crew to peruse the social media and network in pursuit to understand the debate within and between Amazonians, most especially, and also to see the broader spectrum of the Amazonian reach. In one of the heated confrontation would be Mr. Chris Anu in his obvious bully diction, trying to intimate and conscientize former chief of staff of the Department of Communications and IT for simply not being a part of the cool plotters club. The interesting part of it is that Dr. Louise didn't condescend to insult. Rather, he took his time to educate Mr. Anu. And you do not want to miss any minute of the litigy as their smart brings us the detail. Indeed, it was diligent, it was intelligent. I hope Anu and Cole will be humble to these sound words. In reaction to what can be described as arrogance in composure, Dr. Lewis wrote in our rage. Mr. Anu, you said you thought that I was intelligent and that you are disappointed in me. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to destabilize the revolution that was on autopilot. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you in weaponizing Amazonians to fight against each other. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to make Sacco the target instead of La Republic de Cameroon. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to make the revolution about an individual instead of the cause we are all fighting for. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to hijack ABC Forum, the TV that we spent months to get it started. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to orchestrate the most stupid and inconsequential impeachment process in history where evidence are presented after a vote. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to make Amazonia Revolution a mockery to the international community. Of course, you will be disappointed in me for not joining you to go on TV and say that you brought deals that led Sacco to be impeached. How come you were free while Sacco was impeached when you brought the deals? If you think I was intelligent, you should have at least listened to the 10 seconds of messages that I sent to you explaining why your actions were anti-revolutionary and how those actions will weaken the, re the revolution. If you think I was intelligent enough, you should have listened to my counseling about what happened to the revolution after Sisiku was impeached where a majority of those supporting him took a back seat and have never returned back. If you think I was intelligent enough, you should have listened to the statistics that I was presenting to you on how and why Amazonians were no longer buying into your divisive tendencies. If you think I was intelligent enough, you should have listened to my advice on how your legacy will be destroyed if you continue with the unfounded allegations about Sacco. I am a man of my own. I deal with facts, logics, and character, and not emotions and charisma. Some Amazonians who were celebrating your action to overthrow Sacco out of office are now discovering that it was not substantive enough and did not work that toll on the revolution. Why that? Your name is now synonymous to erratic behavior and divisions in many discourses after you took the ill-advised part to destabilize the revolution. That is what emotion and charisma can give you. A good lesson will be to look at two of the most popular individuals in history, Alexander the Great and Jesus Christ. Alexander was a charismatic leader but lacked character, but soon after his death, the palaces, the army, and many others soon disappeared, while Jesus Christ... This is a breaking news. There is a report of gunshot at the University of Bamende, the far power exchanges between the bees and the restoration forces. We have some Snapchat videos, amateur actually, showing how students are scapping for safety. Now you would think from the university to the secondary school and down to the primary, education is getting highly difficult in Amazonia. The plan of our enemies is definitely to leave us uneducated but our children, nephews and nieces must get educated regardless. Please watch the video for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> 
sudden need. You can see our students running for safety. Is that what the university should be about? But in another development, Canal D.O. Fakumba, local government area, goes mad on Ambazonia liberation struggle. Of course, this is not the first time. A video of him has been seen all over social media using profane language to call Joe Dances of Meme County. Just watch the video for yourself. <laughs> you know, there is no security without your own support. We are tired in Meme Division. The population have suffered. And enough is enough. Your papa, you beat them. Mommy, you beat them. The wife or your father, you fuck up. You back. I am tired. Can you imagine that? That is really sad. An apology. Not Anglo-Saxon at all. Whatever this colonel administrator was trying to achieve can be known to him and him alone. Voters will go to the polls in the first round on Sunday. And assuming no one wins a majority, the top two candidates will take part in a runoff on 24th of April. The winner to be chosen from four women and eight women will have the power to shape France and its key role in Europe for the next five years. Although the role has been overshadowed by Russia's war in Ukraine, for most voters, the main issue is the cost of living. When he became France's youngest ever president in 2017, it sealed a material crisis that came less than a year after he launched a centric political movement called La Republique en Marche to challenge the traditional parties, actually. Five years on, at age 44, he continues to dominate French politics, but faced a strong challenge from Marine Le Pen, the far-right candidate he easily defeated in the second round of in 2017. Still smart. Ever since the unconfirmed report of Ambazonian traditional rulers having an underground conference in Paris, you have had a key eye on France and the French presidential elections. What do you have for us? Only I would like to bring to memory a recap before delving into the pressing issues. When Emmanuel Macron became France's youngest ever president in 2017, it sealed a meteoric rise that came less than a year after he launched a centrist political movement called La République en Marche to delay the traditional parties. Five years on, age 44, he continues to dominate French politics but faces a strong challenge from Marine Le Pen, the far-right candidate he easily defeated in the second round runoff in 2017. He entered the LSA as an unknown quantity of former economy minister who had never run for elected office before, a protégé of socialist president Francois Hollande, he swept away all political loyalties and to many voters that set him apart from the ruling class. He has had to navigate choppy political waters to push through controversial reforms. He made it easier for companies to fire workers, cut taxes and introduce tough security law to tackle terrorism. But he was forced to scrap a proposed fair tax in 2018 after weeks of unrest stuck by yellow vest protesters known as Gilles Jones. Other reforms including a promise to bring the jobless rate down from more than 10% to 7% by 2022 were hit by the COVID pandemic, although unemployment is currently down to 7.4%. To he is now proposing full employment within five years, cutting taxes by 15 billion euros, that is 12.5 billion pounds, a year for households and businesses and paying for his program by gradually raising the retirement age from 62 to 65. Increasing the pension age is unpopular with voters already facing a cost of living crunch. His opponents have also accused him of relying on expensive advice from U.S. consultancy firm McKinsey. He has had to rethink a controversial plan to make a back-to-work benefit for the unemployed called RSA conditional on 15 to 20 hours of work a week.
Mr. Macron also wants to invest in the armed forces, doubling France's reserve force. All right, they're smart. Just hang in there for a moment. I have a concern. I would like you to consider these. Africans, Amazonians, have diverse interest points when they look at the political climate in France during this time in anticipation of the outcome of the election. Even though Amazonia was never a formal colony of France, but has unfortunately been raped in the web of Franco-Afrique for decades, it would interest you to know that there are some Amazonians who believe that when the rhetoric in France would change, situations in Africa and perhaps in Amazonia will change as well. It is an open secret that France could possibly be engineering things against Amazonia in high offices because of their economic interests. That could be in jeopardy. Now, there is war in Amazonia and there is already, they already know that Amazonia is the breadbasket of Cameroons, a very stronghold of France in Africa. The situation may be quite complex. Don't you think so, Smart? Only I think I get your point now. But before we even get that far, let us find out what Macron realized in Africa during the last five years. Did he even do what he promised? Before he was elected into office, he looked into the eyes of Africans and made promises, acknowledged that France's grip on former colonies was vicious and even declared that colonialism was an assault against humanity. Now, what did he accomplish in line with the promises he made? Should Africans trust his second term into office? What are the stakes involved? What are his chances? These are some of the questions I will endeavor to highlight answers. When Emmanuel Macron took up residence in the French presidential palace after his election, he had big ideas on Africa. He laid them out clearly during his Ouagadougou speech in November 2017 to relegate the French-speaking backyard to the past. Africa has 54 countries to focus on youth and therefore on education to tackle certain psychological wounds linked to colonial Algeria and post-colonial Rwanda history. To define Europe and France's place on the continent's path to rapid growth over the coming decades. The president also understood from the outset that a large number of the global challenges facing the planet are concentrated in Africa, in particular climate change, demographics, terrorism, development and health. Furthermore, he made the choice again from the outset to maintain France's military engagements in the Sahel and more generally to assume a certain continuity with regard to French-speaking Africa. It is factitious, of course, to speak of two African policies. After all, in the president's mind, this make up a coherent strategy. Nevertheless, this duality is a helpful lens through which to begin assessing Macron's approach to the African continent. The attempt to rearrange France towards a globalized Africa has had some notable successes. Several heads of states from non-French speaking African nations invited by the president, South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, as well as the IMF's managing director traveled to Paris. One of China's four vice premiers, Han Zeng, and US Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, participated by video conference. The obvious challenge is to prevent the COVID-19 crisis from worsening the gap between Africa and developed economies. The president's visit to Rwanda a few days later led to an important and perhaps historic outcome, namely the normalization of relations between Paris and Kigali after France's recognition of the damning responsibility. APS for the Rwanda genocide of 1994. We know that the president relied on the report of the official commission on the Rwanda genocide, which was chaired by the historian Vicente Duclerc and submitted to the government on March 26. In his speech at the Kigali Genocide Memorial, the president found the right words, only those who got through the night can perhaps forgive, and in doing so, give us the gift of forgiveness. Without resorting to repentance, Rwanda President Paul Kagame whose star has faded in the Anglo-Saxon world, seems willing to enter into a phase of reconciliation, at least for the time being. This is certainly a positive development for Macron's desire to unlock one of the psychological traumas weighing on Franco-African relations. So is the story report on France's colonial past in Algeria, submitted to the government on January 21, even if, unlike President Kagame, the Algerian authorities have not expressed satisfaction. 
Over the past few years, President Macron has taken similar measures to address the sensitive elements of African public opinion. He has initiated the dismantling of the West African CFA. Though he is met with reluctance on the part of most of the African heads of state concerned, he has entrusted Cameroonian historian Achille Mbembe, one of the leading African intellectuals and co-founder of the Ateliers de la Pensée de Dakar, Dakar taught workshops. With the organization of the civil societies, Africa-France Summit set to be held in Montpellier in November. He has also taken the first steps toward the restitution of African cultural heritage to their countries of origin. After Kigali, President Macron went to Pretoria. He shares President Cyril Ramaphosa's objective of rapidly developing South Africa's vaccine production capacity. Though he initially showed reserve, Macron had by this point changed his position on the lifting of vaccine patents, such as unexpectedly proposed by President Biden. All in all, the President of the Republic can be considered to have scored points in his strategy to change the way Africa looks at France. As he puts it, and to broaden this framework of France's own approach to Africa, the first of his two African policies seem to be bearing fruits. We can wonder, though, whether he has truly escaped the shadow of what is known as franc Afrique, that special sphere of French influence over its former colonies. The situation in the Sahel is particularly problematic in this respect. Here too, a sequence of recent events provides some answers. The Nook Child Summit in February 2021 was conceived as a follow-up to the Paul Summit held in January 2020. The latter of which was notable for resulting in the deployment of 600 additional soldiers in Oppression Barkhane. The French military intervention in Mali, 5,000 troops. It was expected that the president would announce the withdrawal of these 600 additional troops at the Nocturne Summit. It was also expected that Macron would state an intention to revise his country's posture in Sahel, as it is generally accepted that France's presence cannot continue at its current level and in its current form. Neither of these expectations came to pass, confirming that alongside an ambitious and innovative Macron vis-à-vis -vis a global Africa, there is also a more old-school, cautious and realist Macron in the relationship with West and Central Africa, that of the second African policy. On this front, the French president has had to accept Alassane Altara's decision to stand for re-election in Ivory Coast after he had pledged to retire from political life. Furthermore, it is likely that France will not be able to oppose the apparently inevitable dynastic successions of power in Cameroon or Congo Brazzaville. Yet, these woes come from the very heart of France's strategy in Sahel. First, after President Idris Deby of Shah died under very suspicious circumstances in April 1921 award, Macron was the only Western head of state to attend the long-standing French allies funeral. This was a courageous move but one that illustrates the dilemmas of the French presence in the region, France absolutely needs the Shadian army for the success of oppression back home. It is therefore very difficult for France to disagree too strongly. Macron did so, but after initially appearing to show that he could live with it, with the purely dynastic succession of power that has commenced in Shard. Another setback was Mali's coup d'etat within a coup d'etat on May 24th to 25th leading to an even more direct accession to the presidency by Colonel Asimi Goita, who had ousted President Ibrahim Boubacar Keiti a few months earlier. In an initial stage, joint operations between French and Malian forces have been suspended. For Paris, the situation comes with many risks, one of which is that the military in power in Bamako will enter into negotiations with some of the jihadist groups that have killed French soldiers and whose neutralization is the raising the tar of France's military engagement in the region. Another risk would be endorsing a regime devoid of any legitimacy, a third which is in fact already a reality, is that France's lack of popularity in the Sahel increases and in that the French intervention continues to be seen in public opinion as a pretext for covering up unspoken interests through complicity with local authoritarian regimes. Probably with all these considerations in mind that on June 11th last year, Macron took the extraordinary decision to declare an end to Operation Barking. 
Sir, there are certainly some issues of concern we have to consider as well. Observers believe that Macron might be creating a space for French contenders like Russia and Turkey, which are quite are quick to exploit any setback for France in the region. Now, make no mistake, French troops will stay, but in reduced numbers, with the only purpose of converting the jihadists in a new technical configuration, special forces join the aerial operations, and so on. By 2023, not an immediate horizon. The French military in the Sahel should be more than 2.5 versus 5.6 currently. Details have to be worked out with the French allies in Europe and the United States. All these amount to the beginning of slow and controlled disengagement. We drift in French policy, policy in Africa. Do you think Macron still has the trust of the French voters? What are his chances in the ongoing elections? Tell us, please. Mr. Macron has long been favorite to win the vote, but opinion polls suggest his main rival, Marine Le Pen, has narrowed his lead and would give him a strong challenge in the 24th April runoff. His poll ratings were initially boosted by his diplomatic efforts during Russia's war in Ukraine, but voters are more exercised by increasing views. Marine Le Pen was runner-up to Emmanuel Macron in 2017, and this time she is once again his closest rival. Her family has been synonymous with the far right in France for decades. She can no longer claim the hard right vote to herself because of fierce rival Eric Zemmour. Although some of her team have defected to his camp, including her own niece, his more extreme views on Islam and immigration have made her approach appear more moderate. A political player in France for years, Marine Le Pen became a Euro MP before acting on her presidential ambitions. After her presidential defeat in 2017, she rebranded her National Front Party as Reassemblement National or National Rally. She has since crafted a consistent anti-immigration, anti-EU message that has resonated with disaffected voters. She has in the past expressed her admiration for Russia's Vladimir Putin and relied on the Russian bank loan for her 2007 presidential campaign. She condemns his invasion of Ukraine while warning of the risk of sanctions to the French economy. Now 53, she has promised to hold abuse of the right to asylum with a referendum on restricting immigration and she wants to ban the Islamic hijab being worn in public areas. She also seeks to turn the European Union into an alliance of nations unchallenged by EU laws. Marine Le Pen wants to waive income tax for those under 30 and exempt companies from tax contributions if they raise minimum wages by 10% from many of their staff. And now to sports. Tottenham comfortably beat Newcastle and moved up to fourth in the Premier League. CAF President Mosef to visit AFCON 2023 host Cote d'Ivoire on Monday. Women's Six Nation England in 44-0 win against Italy. Gab Ellison has more detail. Latest World Sports Football Premier League Tottenham came from behind to comfortably beat Newcastle and moved up to the fourth in the Premier League. Antonio Conte's side leap above North London rivals Arsenal on goal defence, but Mikel Arteta's men have two games in hand, including Monday's trip to Crystal Palace. It didn't start well for the host, as Magby's defender Fabian Scar called in a free kick on 39 minutes, though Hugo Lloris will be disappointed at not keeping the ball out. Spurs responded on the stroke of halftime through Ben Davis' glancing header from Son Hung Min's sumptuous delivery into the danger area. Immediately after the break, Spurs turned it around through Matt Doherty's diving header from Harry Kane's cross, and they netted their toward through Son's clinical finish. It got even better on the hour mark when Emerson Royal poked in from close range following excellent build up play by Doherty and substitute Steven Bargwin stroked in late on. Newcastle had no answer and fell to their third consecutive defeat, leaving them 15th in the table but 9 points above the relegation zone. Arsenal vs Crystal Palace 
Two former Arsenal midfielders split their wits against one another in the Selhurst Park dugout tonight as Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace welcomed Michael Ateta's Gunners for a Premier League London derby. The Eagles managed to hold Manchester City to a goalless stalemate before the international break, while Arsenal's top four charge gathered momentum with a 1-0 win at Aston Villa. One week on from being inducted into the Premier League's Hall of Fame for his endeavours as the driving force of Arsenal's midfield, Patrick Vieira will surely envisage no better way to celebrate the accolade than getting won over his former club and his current squad are no pushovers. The Eagles boss will hope that the recent international break has not disrupted his side's momentum as Palace strung a six-game unbeaten run together in all tournaments and advanced to the semi-finals of the FA Cup after putting four unanswered goals past Everton, with Chelsea now lying in wait at Wembley. See we are. AC Milan vs Bologna AC Milan will be looking to tighten their hold on the Serie A summit when they welcome Bologna to San Siro tonight. Italian giants AC Milan will return to Serie A action tonight knowing that they can tighten their hold on the summit with a win over Bologna. A series of excellent results of late have seen the Rosoneri move to the top of Serie A with 8 games to go. Stefano Pioli's side is well placed to secure their first Sudetto and the onus is on them to do their part on the field. Bologna, however, has little to play for and will arrive at San Siro without a win in their last four games. The Minos are certainly there for the taking and the onus is on Milan to take the game to the visitors. Stefano Pioli's men have, however, shown themselves capable of shooting themselves in the foot. Whether the game against Bologna will turn into a banana skin or just another stepping stone to a 19th league title remains to be seen. The hard tackle looks at how both sides could line up on the night and what tactics they might employ. CAF President Mosipe to visit AFCON 2023 host Cote d'Ivoire on Monday. He will meet Cote d'Ivoire President His Excellency Al Hassan Altara, Prime Minister His Excellency Patrick Arki, and Ivoran Football Leadership. Dr. Motsepe will also visit some of the infrastructure that will be used for the Total Energies African Cup of Nations 2023. At noon, he will officially inaugurate the CAF AFCON Satellite Office in Abidjan. The CAF president is currently in Cairo at the CAF headquarters. Rugby Union Women's Six Nations 12th try England earned 74-0 win against Italy. England crushed Italy in Parma as they racked up a 20th success win and stayed firmly on course for a fourth straight Women's Six Nations title. The Red Roses, who trashed Scotland 54-5 last weekend, crossed for the first of 12 tries when Sarah McKenna skipped over in the fourth minute. The one-way traffic continued as Lydia Thompson, Luck Davis, Shelna Brown and Alex Matthews followed suit. Thompson scored two more tries in the second half to complete her hard trick. Prof. Sarah Barnes' extraordinary 50-meter burst was the peak of the scores, 30 seconds after her arrival off the bench. Fellow replacement Vicky Fleetwood, Emma Singh and Emily Scarrett with her 50th England try also added their names to the score sheet after the break, with McKenna picking up her second. England take on an unbeaten Wales side next weekend, but the final weekend showdown with old foes, France, who have beaten Italy and Ireland by more than 30 points in their two openers, looms ever larger. England's win takes them back to the top of the table, courtesy of a 126 points difference. Gab Ellison reporting for Undaunted, ABC Amber News. And with that sports report, we've come to the end of Undaunted tonight. But before we go, here is a recap of the major stories. Yaoundé has employed desperate measures to save the Franco Cameroon hegemony. Some say it is dirt upon arrival. Once again, Dr. Louise Fonap, former Chief of Staff of the Communications Department, has rubbished Chris Arno in obsession. The World Draft is Ambazonia's vote and endorsement of the leadership of the interim government. Today on Undaunted, we are asking who is challenging Emmanuel Macron for the presidency. Twelve candidates are running for the French presidency as incumbent Emmanuel Macron stakes his claim for a second term. And in sports, 
Tottenham comes from behind to comfortably beat Newcastle. And that was it for tonight and Downton bringing into the news on told stories. I am only up, but I will leave you with ABC Amber TV images. Thanks for watching. Don't you hate it when that happens to you? When it does, you need this, and this, and this. When it happens to me, I always know where to go. When you've got professionals on your side, your problems don't stand a chance. What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems. Don't you hate it when that happens to you?